Uh, oh, that's good. That's good. Hi, everybody. Yeah, that's very exciting. That's great. Thank you very much. Uh, hi, everyone. So excited to be here. My name is Tane Danger, and I am the host of this show called The Theater of Public Policy. Pause for applause. That's good. That's good. Yay. So I always like to start shows like this, so um, by a quick Round of applause. Please applaud if you have never seen the theater of public policy before. <laughs> Nobody comes back. Uh, what do we do? <clears throat> so normally what we do at a show is we have a, uh, an expert or two experts on a big issue or idea and I interview them, and then we have this team of really amazing improvisers. So improvisers in the sense they do theater that is completely unscripted, unplanned, all off the top of their head. But for our show, they are listening to this interview with this expert just the same way that you're listening to it. They're hearing this information for the first time, and their job is to do entirely unscripted improv comedy theater off the top of their heads just based on what we heard from our guest experts. Today is a little bit different though because we do have some guest experts with us and we also want our cast to actually hear from you all as well. And so you all and the conversations that you have and what they learn from you will help inform and inspire a lot of what they do up on stage. So. This seems like a very appropriate moment to welcome to the stage the cast of the Theater of Public Policy. Please, a round of applause. Brandon Boat, Duck Washington, Heather Meyer, Lexis Camille. And then if you want to come over to these chairs over here and just hang out there. No, no, just stay there. That's good. So, um, and then as I promised, we do have two fabulous guest experts with us who are here, and they are both uh, experts in uh, end-of-life care and end-of-life planning in two very different ways. Uh, so uh, help me in welcoming to the stage right now just so that you can see their faces. We will actually be interviewing and talking to them in the second half of the show, but please, a big round of applause. First of all, Brenda Hartman, Masters of Social Work, who's here with us. And then Dr. Ann McIntosh, ER doctor, who is going to, we're going to be talking to a little bit later. So, all right, yeah, have a seat. I'm going to, so how is today, how is this show going to work? This is a little bit different. It's a brand new show for us. We're very excited to be doing it here in beautiful Rochester. That's like an easy applause line usually. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, we are extremely excited to be here. Today's show is actually uh, sponsored and brought to you by uh, Mayo Hospice and Palliative Care. They heard about this show that we did and wanted to bring it here, and so we are super excited to be working with them on this. We are gonna do this first part of the show where we have a couple of questions that we actually really want you all to talk about with the people around you. So this is a little bit of a chance for you to meet your neighbors, uh, maybe make a new friend, and talk about some of the big ideas and issues around end of life care and end of life planning. And some of the things that maybe are scary for us to talk about or we know we should talk about and we don't always. Um, and we are in the business today of trying to create a safe space for us all to do that or at least to talk about why we don't do it. Uh, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna ask you at the get go, actually right now would be a great moment for you to try, and I know it's a little awkward because it's a theater seating, but if you want to turn kind of in make a little bit of a group maybe with some of the people next to you so like you can you some of you who are more nimble maybe you can turn all the way around uh, make a small group of people that you're willing to talk to don't leave anybody out make sure everybody is part of a group no person is an island if you see someone that's all alone ask them to get closer this is good everybody's making friends Oh good, make sure you all know each other, shake hands, or if you want to, or just wave, wave at the person sitting next to you. That's good, I like it, that's nice. All right. Okay, here we go, so exciting. Am I in the light? That's good. 
All right, what we're going to do is I have a question that I'm going to ask. I actually have a couple of questions, but we'll get started with the first one. I'm going to put this question, or Brandon's going to help me put this question on the screen, and then going to ask you to just sort of talk about this in your small group. The cast and our experts are going to come around, eavesdrop, listen. We promise uh, to pr protect your uh, anonymity and all of these things, uh, but we just are interested in hearing what people in the room are already thinking. So, Brandon, what's our first question? Oh, uh, what would your ideal end of life be? What would it include if you've never thought about this? Yeah, what, what would the ideal thing be? So, ready, we'll give you about uh, five to eight minutes to talk about this. So on your mark, get set, go. All right, everybody, if I can just kind of bring your attention back up towards the stage. Oh, it's new, it's a different question. Trying not to be as loud into the microphone. Okay, uh, question two, uh, we have one, this is the, the last, it's a multi-part question, but one more thing for you all to discuss in your small groups here. Uh, so, uh, have, so you talked about all these things that you want, sort of as uh, part of your end of life. Ha have, this is not a, my father's a Lutheran minister, so sometimes I get accused of like inheriting his uh, ability to shame, but, uh, <clears throat> but I'm not intending to do that. So have you taken any steps to try and ensure that you have that uh, end of life that you uh, are looking for? Have those things that maybe you were talking about just a moment ago? Have you done specific things to try and set that up? Um, if yes, what were the things that motivated you to do it? Maybe even share with the folks around you what some of those things were. And if you haven't, and that's okay, because that's why we're here, just I don't know, be honest, help us share what maybe has kept you from doing it so far. Um, and what, and be specific. Uh, one logistical thing I'll request is that our improvisers you'll see are, are wandering up and down the aisles a lot. Uh, maybe help them get into the middle a little bit so that these groups in the middle don't feel left out. Uh, okay, so is, does that make sense? You all got these questions? Ready? On your mark, get set, go. Okay, everybody, yay! Give yourselves a big round of applause. Yay, that's good, that's great, that's hard. Okay, if we didn't do anything else today, that would have been a very valuable use of the last 20 minutes. So thank you all so much uh, for taking the time to have those chats with the people next to you, uh, for our, as, uh, our cast to hear and our experts to listen to. So as I said at the top, they uh, were eavesdropping. They were little flies on the wall to the conversations that you all were just having. Uh, and this is obviously the first time that they've heard all of this. So now their job is to try and take the state, try to, they will take the stage and they will take all of the things that they have learned from you all <coughs> and their job is to bring it to life through entirely unscripted improv comedy theater. I cannot stress this enough. This is entirely made up. It is all, it is all just, think about just like improv is hard, uh, end of life conversations are hard, and now we're gonna do improv about end of life conversations. So um, I am very much so grateful to be here, but most of all right now what I need from you is a really big round of applause to get the theater of public policy started. Hey, uh, um, I want to thank everyone for being here. Um, as you know, uh, my dad passed away! Um, and he said that he wanted us to all have a party when he died. And it seems a little weird to me, but I want to honor his wishes. So I got three kegs oh, 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 <laughs> so that we can have a party. Oh. Cool. Um, I knew that your dad was super excited too, so I ordered a birthday cake. But yeah. it's not a birthday cake; it's a it's a death day cake. Ah! <laughs> happy uh, death day, happy dad! Happy death day, dad! He's gonna he's he would have loved it. Well, th well, thank you so much for doing that. Um, um, uh, I I want to point out that a little bit later we're gonna be playing some pinata. Um, you know, and so when you when you break that open, um, uh, uh, lots of candy is gonna fall on the ground. You, those were he, he actually bought those himself before he passed away. Oh. So so uh, uh, so enjoy them. That's really important. I'm just glad he, like he's uh, we're really able to like follow through for him. You know. Yeah. Yeah, that was a hard conversation. Uh, so, so, so no, like, I don't want to break up the mood. You're right. Don't do that. Don't bring that here. That's it still not seems what really down. Like. I don't think my dad wanted everything to, everybody to be sad. Oh. Oh, oh, 
it's so hard because if he wanted a party, it's we're still sad. Yeah, that's okay. Um, yeah. I mean, we still get to be sad. Or not? Did he not want I, us to be I, sad? I think he specifically was like, I don't want anybody crying. <gasps> wait, wait, did he just tell you that? Because like, I, I feel like, yeah, like I didn't, that wasn't really on the, the list. That wasn't on the directive of like, guys, don't be sad. I don't think it was like, See, yeah, so, so, so me and dad sat at a campfire one time and he like, like, you know, maybe we were a little drunk and maybe he said, man, I want to have a party. And I was like, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> I never said anything. What? what? This was a test. This is what you call a party. Look what I got streamers and you love cider. Okay, this is not funny. That's this is not funny. Dad, how could you fake your death like that? It was easier than you think. What's more important is this party is all wrong. Well, yeah, I'm taking these streamers down. Damn. Yeah, we really tried really hard to respect your wishes. Yeah, I got my advanced directive right here. I'm looking at all this stuff, what I wanted for my end-of-life care plan, and none of my friends are here. You're not playing the music that I like. Red streamers instead of maroon streamers. Come on! Um, I just, um, there's a whole menu of options. I know, <laughs> and I appreciate it, and, um, um, yeah, and I just, um, I don't know if you want, like, the special of the day or what most people just always eggs. get. <laughs> eggs, yeah. Eggs, eggs, eggs. Is good. Yeah. Eggs, eggs is, like, a great part of breakfast, and think yeah. about if you want eggs, do you want those eggs over easy, or do you want them sunny side up, ah, so scrambled, poached, there's, a, there's actually a lot of options, it may seem like you're just ordering eggs. Oh. Oh, well, no, I appreciate having options. That just kind of makes things smoother to know that I have choices and I'm not boxed into like one thing. Unless you'd like to be boxed in, yeah. that's also an option. Cool. Thank um. you so much. Uh, um, uh, you know, let me sit. Um, sometimes these uh, seem like really long forms, but it's just a menu. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, like you said, uh, the, the over easy. Uh, did you mention scrambled? Yeah, scrambled yeah, is scrambled. an option. You cool. also can do scrambled with um, like cheese in it or onions what? or right. even just like half of it can be scrambled. You have one-eyed bandits. We do. That's what I want. You'd like a one-eyed bandit? Yeah, some people call them like egg in a basket or yeah. some other yeah. things. But at that, boom, I want it and that'll make me happy. I just, and this, I appreciate you by the way. Thank you so much for being so open to having this conversation. Yeah. Uh, uh, How does it feel to know that you're gonna get a one-eyed bandit? Th that's my point. I know that I'm going to get a one-eyed yeah. bandit because yeah. you listen to me. Absolutely. And um, uh, Deborah, I just, I know it's not easy to, for a friend to be like, help me to, like choose. Um, and you really came through for me and I, I really appreciate that. There's like a lot of respect and, and trust in this process. and. I just, I just feel like it's gonna make the one-eyed bandits like taste that much better. <laughs> well, I I agree, and and whether or not I am around to have that one-eyed bandit, or I have, or you have some of the scrambled egg frittata that I ordered. Oh, yeah. uh, regardless of what comes first and who has what experience, you you're important to me, uh. and knowing that I know what you want for breakfast. Yes makes me know that I'm taking care of you uh, at breakfast. And that makes me feel like I'm taking care of you because I'm just stating my needs, my wants, and yeah. it's just clear, right? It's that just, is all I want. Yeah. I would never want to guess what you would want for breakfast. No, right? <laughs> because I, who am I to assume that maybe you wanted fried eggs? Right, or like get married, or like, yeah, yeah right? Anything. I, I just, um. <laughs> so uh, I understand that you're a man with a certain set of skills. I've been called that. Well, I've been told I know how to do things. Well, that's good, because I need someone who knows how to do things. Because, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people see death coming for them. And I want my death to happen randomly. And the way I've decided to do that is to hire you. <laughs> On the, in this envelope, there is a date and a time that's randomly been selected by a computer. And when that date comes, I want you to use your special set of skills on me. That way I won't know when it's gonna happen. Uh, Donald, I, I'm a handyman. Like, I know how to do lots of, <laughs> lots of things. I mean, you know, if you want me to cut your grass or chop down a tree or, you know, get rid of a critter or something like that, like. Well, I just can... consider me the critter. Oh. <laughs> I, 
I don't know. I mean, anyone at random? But I mean, doesn't I mean, that it's generate? It'll tell you when to do it. I just don't know. But it's already going to be random. You already don't know. <laughs> but if I, you know, like, like if something happens, and I, like the doctor tells me I have two months to live, then I have the stress of knowing that for two months. What if I just read it out loud to you? No, right no, no, now? no. Then no, you're no. gonna know. No, 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 no. I don't want to know. Then you're gonna know. It's right here. No, just that's for wow. you. Wow. Yeah. Really interesting. <laughs> really? Yeah, I mean, coincidence, really. Why, uh, sure, I'm sure that it is. I don't, I don't need to know any more than that. Yeah. You don't got a lot of time. <laughs> w what do you mean I don't have a lot of time? I mean, it could be, that could mean you have a lot of time or a little bit of time. I don't know. It's kind of a relative description. Like, is it days? Is it months? Years? Well, All this uh, could be short. I said I, I said I didn't want to know. I want it to be a surprise. I just want to kind of live my life without <sighs> thinking about it. And then one day, oh, it's over. Yeah, but I mean, it's not exactly, oh, it's over when it's like a lawnmower or something. Like, that, that's what I had. <laughs> hey, buddy. Uh, so you want to get a tattoo? Oh, uh, yeah. Chest? Yeah. <laughs> you know I do. <laughs> uh, all right. I just, um, you know, I, I, I'm open to a lot of things. I've just never, uh, uh, this is a little forward, maybe. I don't want to question your choices. Uh, uh, DNR? Yeah. Just the right on the your DNR, chest. right across. Like, right, just put out, right across there, just like that. Oh, uh, look, I'm not a medical professional or anything, but I feel like you should have a conversation with your family, or unless it's like some kind of backup. I don't, I'm not judging. I just do the ink, right? Yeah, that's, well, you know, I, I, I mean, I appreciate your concerns, but. But this is this has all been thought out. Like we've had conversations with a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. No, I wish I was like that. I, I, I'm not. I'm not ready for that conversation. It's like I gotta accept it or something, and I'm not ready to do that. No, you gotta. You gotta step to the plate. You gotta get that taken care of. You know, like, like things can be disastrous when, when you don't have that stuff situated. You can go oh, ahead. I'm and get sorry, it. I'm late. <laughs> I wanted to be here for this. You're oh. doing a great thing. Thank you. Hey, uh, uh, Dave. Oh, I'm Ryan. Ryan. Yeah, this is uh, this is smart thinking of you. I mean, yeah. I just changed mine last week, and oh, you know, it's something you really need to think about. Wait, I'm sorry. Uh, well, I had my changed. Your, your tattoo? <laughs> no, no. When no. did you get changed? I'm too scared to do that. No, I just had to uh, talk to the lawyer, got it, and then it's in all the right places. So everybody has it if they need it, because you know, ooh, you know. Medical science, it's something better than it was. Yeah, you know, well, you can have I, a good quality of life when you get resuscitated. I, 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 under, I understand that. Um, but no, this is great. This is great. Like, if I, if I need to in the future, I can always add an addendum underneath. <laughs> That's what I was wondering. How are you going to undo this if you. <laughs> okay, okay. Since we don't have a family yet, we don't have to do anything. Nothing. Nothing. So uh, I know your dad brought over a lot of paperwork, Oof. and like we had a serious talking to about estate planning, life insurance. Like back all off, that. Dad. You're glitching like, out. We just got married. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. We don't have to do. We just signed a piece of paper and said legally connected. Or something. I didn't even read I didn't it that closely. Either. I just didn't it. matter. I mean. Didn't Hello, matter. we bought a house. That's a lot of signing. Oh, it's like page after another. No, thank you. We've got decades before we need to sign a bunch more papers. Oh, we got centuries. <laughs> right? We got centuries. We, we don't know. We don't we know. We don't even Science, know. Science, it's doing a lot these days. You know, it is. And I, you know what I want? What? To just stay forever. Yeah? Yeah. You're just going to... I'm just going to hang out forever. I mean, it like said a vampire, but not a vampire. It did read on the paper till death do us part, but not. Yeah, you're forever. not going anywhere. Well, I didn't read forever. Well, <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, um, I wasn't on the sheet. Hey, are you guys gonna order? I like to take my break and like, uh, which bread? Cool. There's so many. There's see. There's we just got married. Yeah, yeah. I so heard. We made, I like, heard that. One big choice. So like making all these other choices, we don't have to do for don't a have long time. time. I don't have that kind of executive function right now. Can't make all those. Yeah, I just feel like it's pretty straightforward. You can just kind of like, it's like uh, Italian, uh, wheat, uh, white. It's like, do you want open or closed casket? Wheat, oh. white. Whoa! That's with all the questions. Okay. You know, coming down. I'm just a sandwich artist, and I just, I really, 
would like to go on my break, so you guys so, could do okay, a foot so on her. I appreciate your work at Subway. Please, yep. So you got the turkey. I do. What is, is the you turkey, want turkey? Like, should the turkey be smoked, or should it be oven roasted, or should mm. it just be deli cured? I don't, I don't. See? No one wants to answer these questions. No, it's not like I don't want to answer it. I actually, I kind of just don't care, and I need you to make a decision. <laughs> oh, decision. <laughs> Hey, 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 kids, how how you doing? <laughs> Pretty good. Uh, good, Dad, um, sorry. Um, you know how uh, when your great-grandma got a little bit older, she moved in with your grandma? Yeah, yeah you guys complain about that for, like, <laughs> ever. And then when grandma got, got ill, she moved yeah. in with me and your mom. Yeah, yeah grandma's was, cool. Yeah. Um, well, now I bet, you know, your mother and I are getting a little older, and I, I bet you... You want to move in with grandma. <laughs> Uh, That's sweet of you. That's we, nice. Uh, she came in with, I mean, she raised you, and then you came It's, oh, it's okay, a full, okay. uh, I think it's, I think it's time uh, five, that, that, that five eighty. I just, I just clear the, clear the, the air for everybody. We have no intention at all in moving in with either of you. Well, well what, why not? Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> Wow, it's getting a little hot in here. Ah. No, it's not that we don't. I mean, we love you. We 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 like you, but um, but but you know, like you you don't quite take care of your houses the way we would have expected you to. Oh, we do and we just think that we would be happier living in some other place, a I hospice, anything else. <laughs> Wait, I. I've got like six Whoa. bedrooms, I got a whole patio, and I made sure there was like a ramp thing in case, and like, so there's like access for mom to do her thing. What, what? But if we slept in that room, where would the rats sleep? <laughs> we don't have rats, we, they're like, they're basically like a, a pets, they're neighborhood pets. <laughs> neighborhood pets, there's no such thing as a neighborhood pet. Yeah, well, when you live in a tight community, which I thought we were, as a family, we're a community. We're getting distracted here. You don't like us? I love you. Is that what you're you. saying? I, I love you. That. You don't trust me. I just me. don't want to live with you. You don't trust me to make decisions for you. Look, I lived with you all for 18 years. I feel like I've done my time. I mean, <laughs> I was going to let it pass when you gave power of attorney to your attorney. Whoa. And not us. Whoa. I thought, you know, they I went to law school. They got them brains. I don't. Don't but say this, that about yourself. Yeah. No. You were supposed to say that. You're supposed to say it. Yeah. Whatever. My children are, are great. They're working really hard. They've created these lovely homes. Yeah. And made all this space for us just in case. Well, you don't have to make space for me. Just you can use that space for whatever you want to now. Think of all the fun things you could do with that room. Think of how many more rats you could put in there. It'll be fun. We'll still do Christmas. We'll still do Thanksgiving. Where? Until, I, until I die, and then I'll be free of that too. <laughs> A big round of applause, everybody, the theater of public policy. Yay! All right. <laughs> Fabulous. Please, actually, uh, help me in welcoming back to the stage our two guests for this afternoon. Uh, first up, uh, Brenda Hartman. She's a clinical social worker. Her company's called Healing Through Life. A big round of applause. Brenda Hartman, everybody. <laughs> then next up, she is an emergency room physician with a special interest in these issues that we're talking about today in end-of-life care. Big round of applause, Dr. Ann McIntosh, everybody. Yay. Uh, actually, I'm going to have you two sit together. Uh, all right, so thank you so much, and I'm going to turn this on for you all. So, um, so we, we saw the improv, and you all were also uh, walking around and doing this. Um, maybe we should just, though, introduce you a little bit to the audience to start with. Um, we all met, actually, uh, more than a year ago, because I knew that you both uh, worked in this. But can I just ask, how did you each sort of come to this being part of your work and your passion? Do you want to, Dr. Dr. McIntosh? this question. Oh, can you turn her up just a little bit, please, if you're in the booth I there? Talk oh, there well. we go. Oh, Perfect. We go. That's better. So um, I'm faced with this question frequently, and it's not under the best of circumstances. It doesn't usually lend to having time to discuss it. And 
you know, my, I know that having had this discussion makes things so much better and easier. I would often be faced with looking at one kid from a family going, what do you, you know, what does she want to do? And nobody knew. So that's what inspired my passion. And as you know, it's a super hard topic to bring up and nobody wants to talk about it. And I've done all kinds of trying to get my community going. And I thought, we need to do improvisational comedy <laughs> to get people to do this. And people thought I was nuts. And yeah. I, well, I we'll find out. Yeah. Time. Well, I mean, there's there. I should use this. There are post-show surveys. Uh, yeah. So, um, uh, there's, a, there's a question about. There, that. Yeah. It was this nuts? Uh, Br uh, Brenda, uh, how how tell us about your journey to this being such a big part of your work? Just so I had the opportunity to be diagnosed as a stage four ovarian cancer patient. Oh, opportunity. That is uh, so, uh, so optimistic. Um. Well, and I got to face my death. And so that was a really wonderful experience, not at the moment. But it taught me a lot about living, knowing that I'm going to die. Because I didn't die, um, just in case you wonder. Um, <laughs> and I changed my career path, because that was 31 years ago, I'd like to point out. Yeah. <laughs> so I changed my career path from doing research and decided to work with people and walk with people that were facing chronic, serious, and life-ending illness because I got it. So uh, you both were, you both do this professionally and you look at this from a variety of different angles. You were getting to listen to some of the things that you heard in the room. So um, obviously, were there things that you heard that were just like very, very common either in this room or just common to the things you hear normally? Absolutely. I heard people want to be pain free. I heard people want to just go like that, right? <laughs> just Did anybody s like snap their fingers <laughs> like this? Like, I think yeah. They could have. Yeah. <laughs> I heard a lot of people say they wanted to just, I think about it as wake up dead, go to fall asleep and not wake up, right? It's, um, <laughs> Some people, uh, what they said is that they want to make sure that they have people around them understand where they are and have the opportunity to be able to speak honestly about what's happening. Dr. McIntosh, did you hear similar things? I did. I heard some, uh, some things that are super common. The arguing family seems to be very common. And that's one of the things that having this discussion, having everybody there and getting on the same page can really mitigate to a degree. Um, the arguing and, and everybody knows, knows everything. Um, and the location, I think that comes up frequently. And one of the things that I heard here and I learned, I felt like in a really profound way is, you know, they talk about everybody wants to die at home and 70% of people end up dying in the hospital. Wait, can, just to underscore that, I, I don't, th I heard also, I wrote down, uh, several people I heard say, oh, I, I want to die at home or I want to die surrounded by, I, I, did anybody say, I would really love to die in a hospital bed, like surrounded by machines? Um, yeah. Raise like, your hand. yeah, I, I mean, it does, but it is interesting. And so then to underscore that statistic, you said 70% of people do end up that dying, dying in, a in a hospital. hospital. Yeah. Oftentimes in the intensive care unit with no contact. I heard people saying they wanted soft touch and music and, uh, you know, there's no good music in the ICU. Um, <laughs> that seems like a problem we could I'm fix. Uh, I, we all have Spotify. Uh, <laughs> we could. <laughs> okay, so we solved that problem. Yeah. But the, you know, anyway, so yeah, statistically, and the default of the healthcare system is to do everything, which means do it all in the emergency department and admit them to the ICU. So, um, one of the, at the same time, there are other options other than at home, because one of the things, one of the nurses that I used to work with in the emergency department's uh, mom was dying, and she just assumed she'd want to die at home and was doing everything to make arrangements for that, and her mom's like, I don't want to die at home because I don't want your dad to have to live in this house where I died. So, you know, and which brings up, you know, it opened her mind and my mind to remember there are options. Well, this is a thing I'm interested from either of you that it seems to come up a lot. I also heard when I was wandering around folks say, talking about uh, wanting to avoid that family conflict, some of which we kind of saw in the improv and whatnot. And what's interesting is like, I don't know, may, this is maybe my experience, but I can hear my mother saying, oh, well, 
I don't want to burden you with talking about like my end of life right now, right? Like, because that, that's too much to put on you right now. But it sounds like part of what you're saying is, well, we're, you're going to bur be burdened with that at some point, so why not do it now as opposed to when it's just guesswork? Well, I think the point is, is it unloads the burden. And all the studies c have shown that if you have the talk, everybody does better in the short term and the long term. And I think, Brenda, you could talk a little more about that. Well, I think the st statistically, and I'm not going to bore you with that, but people, if they are in the emergency room and you're with Dr. McIntosh and you have not had these conversations, she doesn't have a choice what to do. Because if you're arguing about should we or shouldn't we do things, from her training, her ethical requirements is to do everything, okay? And what we know is that when that happens is that the family members end up arguing amongst themselves because there's always somebody that says we shouldn't have done anything and then there's the other people that said, but we didn't know, okay? So then that leaves distress between them. They're arguing with Dr. McIntosh and then afterwards we know that, I know I find these people in my office all the time. They're dealing with post-traumatic stress because they keep reliving again and again and again what happened. And that delays and really impacts their grief process, which is an important part. So I think it's important for us to know that accepting the discussion around end of life and what somebody wants, and everyone wants something different. Nobody wants the same thing, and that's great. But accepting it doesn't mean that I want my loved one to die or I want myself to die or that I even like it. But those are very different, so I can accept something I don't like. For example, I can accept that I never got to be 5'5", five five, right? <laughs> that doesn't mean that I like it. I never got to share clothes with my sister because she's 5'10", <laughs> okay? But that's a different piece. And so to know that, we can have these really deep conversations and not necessarily say I like it, but we can because it's going to help us down the road. I believe in you. You hey. can be 5'5", five five, uh, <laughs> any day now. Um, so uh, were there any, just out of curiosity, it might be the answer is no, when you were walking around, was there anything that you heard, even after having both done this for a decade or so, like that you're like, oh wow, I have never heard that one before? Well, there's one conversation that I was honored to be a part of, and they were discussing death with dignity. And they were having, you wonderful people up there, discussing what does dignity mean? <laughs> what is dignity? Yeah, that that's is a, a, a big deep word. question. Yeah. That's right, you know, and I've, I've had people say, they want their sheets changed every day. I've had people say they want their nails done. I've had people, I've had couples argue about whether or not cleanliness is an issue. I've had the husband say, who cares about cleanliness? I'm dying. And she's like, absolutely, I want to be. But so that's what's dignity. So what a profound question. And I love that you spent time thinking about that, if that's an important piece to you. Oh, wow. That's... Yeah, I don't even have that conversation now about how often to the, like <laughs> change the sheets. Yeah. I just do it. I just do it. I'm the one who does it anyway. Uh, That's good to know. <laughs> any any total shockers for you or? I think I think one of the things that kind of surprised me or it doesn't really surprise me because I think this is how it is. But you know how suddenly things can happen and how suddenly things can change. And, you know, that's kind of my world. It's like, who knew? But things can change suddenly. Um, the other thing I was thinking about is how much better people do in the long term if they've had this conversation. If they haven't, you know, there's studies to show that people have PTSD and in distress, and you can't go talk to the tiebreaker because the tiebreaker is dead. Um, whereas a lot of, you know, a lot that's of... That's one way to put it, yeah. <laughs> Dang, and then everybody's irritated. But, you know, so anyway, uh, lots of studies support doing this even though it's hard and, um, and that people do better, their grief process is better. So I wanted to keep on the positive side of that too. Uh, okay, I, I, ha I could ask um, Brenda and Ann questions all day, but I wanna give you all a chance uh, to ask them some questions. So, uh, ooh, yes, I was gonna say, if you have a question, raise your hand, and I will come towards you with the microphone in a non-threatening manner. And uh, I will not only give you the microphone, I will reward you with a sticker. Uh, all right, here we go.
Hi, I was curious about um, what is what would be more most useful for you in an emergency room setting to have because there are DNRs and there are end of life directives. Do you have time to look at that paperwork? Who are you listening to? What's what would be really good for you to have? I don't always have time to look at that paperwork. And to be honest, in the emergency medicine community, you know, some people are more aggressive about finding it if it exists. Um, in the electronic health record is a whole nother issue of like extracting the information. So. You know, if there's family members that know, so, you know, a lot of times I just have to go with whoever is there. And I try to be very careful about asking, you know, what did this, the person say, not what do you think, because that's another huge load that's taken off of people. This is what she thinks. You don't have to like it or agree with it, but it's what they wanted and it much, it's much easier. So I don't always have time to look. Probably the most like amazing thing that's ever happened to me in my career along these lines is I had a patient who was dying, and she was dying imminently, and I had to decide, you know, do we res try to resuscitate her, or do we, as I like to call it, allow natural death, not withhold anything from her, but just allow natural death. All four of her daughters were standing at her bedside saying, we, we had an appointment Tuesday for her to sign her advanced care directive, and everybody was on the same page, and I was like, oh, thank you. Um, as far as other forms, a post form is usually in the medical record. It's sometimes a little more accessible. And that, you know, usually says, I mean, do nothing is, I think, the really important thing is if you don't want stuff done, you have to put that all over because the default of the entire healthcare system from EMS through the intensive care unit is to do anything unless otherwise specified. I, one thing I just want to call, and, and raise your hand if you, you, you want to ask the next question, but it sounds like a big piece of what you're saying is the paperwork is really important, and it's often maybe not enough, that you also have to like talk to people in your life about this too, if that's possible, if you have people that are going to be there, that that is also part of this. You can't just sort of maybe write something down and then just stick it in your coat pocket and hope you hope are wearing that one on the day. That day. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of different forms. There's a lot of resources online, and I think so, th sometimes there's too many. Um, and I try to narrow that down. There's one uh, sheet that's called the values worksheet. You can't always think about what might happen, you know, what's going to bring me to the emergency department, and then how is this all going to play out. It's not usually that easy or algorithmic. But if you have a general sense and you share that, like, I'm not somebody who would want to have life prolonging things done. Um, there is another sheet that I particularly like called My Particular Wishes that kind of goes through the, some of the really hardcore medicine stuff. And it gives you the option to say never. I don't want it at all. I want it for a little bit until somebody says, you know, this isn't working. Or I want full go, you know, never discontinue it until whatever. Um, so th I think the more information you have, the more specific you can be, the more helpful it is. Great. OK, other questions? And I am willing to come anywhere, including all the way over to the other side. Uh, raise your hand. Don't forget, uh, stickers and expert knowledge. Uh, so <laughs> who has a question? Yes, right here in front. And is there somebody, just so I can start to plan my route to the next person, who else has a question? Oh, way up in the back. Perfect. Great. Uh, so how can you motivate uh, physicians to address end-of-life issues when their patient's care is declining and they will imminently die? So to have, have the doctor address, if the patient doesn't have an advanced directive, for example. How do you, you get the physicians to talk to them? Initiate the conversation? Yes. Yeah. Because I, sorry. over the years I have, and I've told some of the docs that not a single person has ever tipped over dead from that conversation. And, and that's been true. No. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, I think that that is a tough thing. And as you know, we're all individuals, and that's the same as doctors. And I'll clue you in is that this conversation is probably, you know, just as hard for doctors. And sometimes I think even harder just because, you, you know, you have all these different visions. I, I would just ask. I would say, hey, you know, they're declining, and especially if you've had the conversation with that person, we want to have, you know, we want to talk about it. We want you to be aware. You can fill out, you know, some of the paperwork at 
home, the advanced directive doesn't require doctor's order. Uh, the POLST form, P-O-L-S-T, is the form that needs a doctor's order to be implemented. Um, you know, I'd say, hey, we want you to sign this is one thing. Um, but I think just bringing up the conversation. Um, can I ask, uh, Brenda, uh, I mean, I know both of you have worked a lot on this, but Brenda, I know a lot of your thought is about changing the whole culture around this as well. And I think that that's kind of part of this question is that there's like a culture even within medicine where doctors aren't bringing this up. So <laughs> easy question, if you can, in just 30 seconds, how do we change culture? Uh, Turn around, clap, clap, no. <laughs> yeah, I, I deal with this all the time um, because many people's, the, the physicians they're working with are not as open and involved as Dr. McIntosh is. I spend time talking with people and walking through it, and we practice what to say because a lot of the time you're guiding the physician. So we have to remember physicians are trained to save lives. And that's very different. And another avenue is I talk about death is healing. And that's just my craziness. That's a Brenda thing that I believe, and I'm not asking any of you to believe it, but I believe that our whole life journey is about healing. And when I've fin finished what I came here to do, whatever that means, I'm completely healed. And I get to leave this body. And so that changes the dynamic, because as a cancer patient, when I look and read in the obituaries that somebody's lost their battle with cancer, the first thing that happens to me is, does that mean that we all die, we're losers? It's like, I don't know, somebody did a great job, and they finished and they completed what they came here to do. And so that, if you can walk into the physician's office with a very different attitude yourself, you're gonna help your physician who may be uncomfortable not being able to say, this treatment's no longer working. And we also know with the family members, that makes it easier for all of us to talk about it. So I joke, but I don't think death is healing is a joke. I think it's true. People do laugh at me, and then we continue. Okay, that is brilliant. Uh, where, there was a hand up here. Oh, yes, thank you. Well, it, it goes a little deeper in the sense of the, um, the objective of medical staff, and they are, they are driven to do everything they can to help, right? And sometimes they take very extreme measures. Um, where does our culture lie with if I choose that I, I don't want to suffer for a long time, like I, I want to choose at what point it would be graceful and dignified for me to be able to make some choices. I know that's a huge burning topic throughout maybe this country, but where, do, where does the medical profession kind of stand in something like that? They, that's going even in the other direction. You know, not so much stopping care, but going in a different direction with it. So we're gonna let Dr. McIntosh talk about that too, but that's, you know, as she used the phrase, a natural death, and all of these documents we're talking about are part of that. And if what I have witnessed and worked with walking this path with people for over 25 years is that if my wish is that I do not want to go to the emergency room, and I do not want to have all kinds of machines, I want to be free of pain, you're now talking about hospice. You're talking about a different setting as opposed to being medicalized and not putting the emergency room physician in that position of what to do or not to do. And so that's part of it. The other piece I think you're talking about is compassionate care or end of life care. That is a different choice that Minnesota is in the process of having that conversation. They talk about it as compassionate choices. That's been part of our legislature and that is a big philosophical conversation, but it's also a personal one. Can you just define that terminology just in case there are folks in the audience who don't, haven't followed that debate exactly? Well, I'll tell you the non-medical way, <laughs> and she can do the medical part, having done some work with people around this, is that if, there's a way that if we 
a person knows that they're dying. So let's stay in the world of cancer because one of the, what I would refer to as twisted gifts of cancer is that there's a point where we know as a cancer patient that my treatment's no longer effective. And when I, the more treatment I have, the less function and quality of life that my body will sustain. And so I, at that point, can make the choice to stop treatment. And then at that point, I know I'm going to die. So I can ask if we were a state that I could have a physician-assisted death. There's a series of chemicals that they could give to me. There's, there's many laws around that and that person needs to be competent. They're the ones that's choosing that. Their family members are involved. Everyone needs to know, and I need to be in charge of when is it that that happens. So it helps me so I can die quickly after I've had a chance to say goodbye to all of you and thank you for everything that you've given to me. So I, I think it's sort of, it's on a spectrum, and as Brenda said, the conversation that's, that's in front of the legislature now and that people are having is, is they call it physician-assisted suicide or physician-assisted death. I, I don't like some of the terminology, but anyway, it's a more active assistance in the dying process by a medical professional. <laughs> And I mean, I think that that conversation is part of the conversation. And I think in terms of how do we influence physicians, how do we change culture, I think one, we're here and you're here. And we're on the cutting edge and we need to be pushing some of this. And in my patient advocacy work, one of the things I often say is, without getting into detail, I mean, the healthcare system and the people that are part of it have been trained by, for better or for worse, in, in this particular way. And what we really need to do, and what I feel really strongly about is, we need to help our physicians, I mean, we need to be part of culture change, and then we need to help our physicians, you need to free them sometimes to do what is, I don't want to say what is best, because I think everybody really tries to do what is best, but sometimes it was, somebody living was the only best thing, and that isn't always the best thing. So I think giving your permission, your physician permission to, we want help in the dying process. We don't want antibiotics. We would, we're happy with reassurance. There's a number of, you know, different ways that, that I think physicians need to be freed in this way. But certainly in terms of the death and dying, I think, again, it just goes back to people knowing what they want and having an advocate that's comfortable standing up when the process is maybe not going that way for whatever reason. Okay, I've got two last pieces I'm gonna ask you both um, because I want to give folks uh, a chance to walk out of here with like, okay, as you said, if this is the cutting edge, what do we do? Uh, so it seems like one of the things that we're saying is we all have a responsibility to do something for ourselves and maybe, again, if you're thinking about there's these folks in the audience that have heard this, they're like, all right, you've convinced me. This is something that I, I need to think about, I need to plan for. Like, what, what do you recommend as sort of a first step or a thing to do to get started? Well, one of the things to do, of course, is get it all down in writing. So um, it's, there's, it's sort of, th you know, different steps. There's picking a proxy, the person who's going to talk to you when you're unable to talk, then there's the making sure that they know what you want. Putting that in writing is what's considered your advanced care directive, uh, as opposed to your po health care power of attorney is that person. Um, there's, like I said, there's lots of online resources. Uh, Minnesota Honoring Choices is a site that has all the paperwork. You can download the paperwork, you can print it off. The advanced care directive does not need a lawyer's signature. It needs two witnesses. It's very simple. Have the conversation with all the people who need to know. Distribute the paperwork to all the people that uh, need to know your, your health care system, your, your primary care provider, and, and whatnot. So those are kind of the, the hard hardware type of stuff. Any other ones to add to that before I ask a harder one? <laughs> I'd say have dinner. If there's a whole death cafe thing, have dinner with your friends and have a conversation. Just, and to know that you can keep changing your mind, you know? Throughout it's dinner? Throughout dinner, throughout your life, because you're not dying today, but 
you can keep changing. And so I would just encourage okay. you to write stuff down well, and date it. That, yeah. Oh, I, the oh, go. Holiday season. The holiday season. Everybody's going to be together. Bring it up. <laughs> okay, how? That's the question is how do you do that? Okay, so you so say. So let's pretend we're at dinner right now, okay? We're just at dinner. Well, you know me, Tane. <laughs> I'm all about death. I talk to these weird people. Is the people. dinner that bad? Is the dinner that bad? I heard these two crazy ladies. I went to this play. These improv people that were absolutely amazing. You wouldn't believe it. It was funny, and we I talked don't about death. It. No. Yeah. I, so let me tell you. Okay. What are you gonna do? What's a good death for you, Tane? Definitely not at an improv show. I'll well. tell you that. <laughs> uh. Do you want to be in a box? Do you want to be out of box? Some people call it breakfast. Okay. So <laughs> this is. Uh, this is a good segue into my last question, because this is a thing that I heard come up in uh, the room, and I feel like we haven't addressed this. I did hear several people say, like, I'm here. I get this. Mom does not get this, and I do not know how to, like, bring this up with mom. And if I try to, she is going to, like, walk out of Thanksgiving or whatever it is. So how do you start that conversation maybe with someone who didn't voluntarily come to an improv comedy show about end of life care on a Thursday afternoon. <laughs> There's this great set of cards you can get online that's called Go Wish. And you there's 36 questions about what would you wish for your end of life. And this is not about the paperwork, but it's about do you want to be clean? What kinds of wishes, and the research those folks have done have to do with, if you get 10 of your wishes, like do you want to be touched? Do you want to have music? If you do, what kind of music? How many people do you want in the room? Do you want those people that you used to work with that you didn't get along with to come on in <laughs> or not? And so it's a great card game. So you can just bring those cards out. It's not you saying it then. It's these cards saying it. What do you think about that? I did, I, you know, imagine my poor family. I got three generations together to, had to do that together. I bribed them with dinner. And then we all talked about it, and then it was fascinating. Everybody talked about their top ten wishes, and there was a wide range. One person said, this was my top ten. Somebody said, that was, I could have cared less about that. <laughs> yeah. Another cool thing now th about this is also this, all the feedback, and I'm sure it's the same for you, is people end up having these conversations. They leave the cards, but they learn things about their family and their family's wishes and the family history and stuff that they never, they never knew and, and what people's values are. And so in... Really, I haven't heard a whole lot, I guess, about really where all oh, the conversation went miserably, everybody hates each other more than they did before, or, or Thanks any, a lot. any of that. Yeah. yeah, thanks for bringing it up. And I'm sort of the same person in my family, and my mom, every time I brought it up, she goes, oh, you're just trying to knock me off. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, mom, we got to do this. I'm like, you know, it's sort of somebody was saying, you know, you feel like if you're... Um, if you're talking about this and, and evangelicalizing about this, that you should at least have your own done. So I'm like, yeah, I try to practice what I preach, and that's why I try to not preach too much. But, but anyway, so you know, we talked about it. We'd have to. We, I brought it up a bunch of times. You know, I'm in the position to be able to kind of go, no, mom, we need to do this because one, I'm your healthcare proxy. So I mean, I think that that's w one approach. And like with my kids, I'm like, okay, you guys. If I ever see an example like, I don't want to be like that, um, you know, they're like, Mom. I'm like, no, really, you guys, I, I want it to be as easy as possible for you. I want to, if there's an example, um, so, you know, we've talked about it, and they just, you know, they roll their eyes and stuff. But, you know, when the time comes, they know. They have ideas. Well, on that note, can we wish uh, both uh, Brenda Hartman, Dr. Ann McIntosh, a big thank you so much for spending this time. We're going to call off stage. Uh, one more time, I'm going to turn the Thank stage you. over to the cast of the Theater of Public Policy. So just like before, everything they do is all made up. It's one more time, all improv comedy based on just what we heard from our two fabulous guests. So please, one more time, a round of applause for the Theater of Public Policy. Yeah, well, you know, I... 
I think, I think it's time that we talk about our quality of life plan, oh, our you know, end of life, life plan. plan. No, we, we, really need, we really need to talk about this, okay? Because like, if we don't plan, we're not going to be ready. And I have, I have a few options I really, I really want to talk to you about. All right, all right. So I've been reading up on the Holy Grail. I think that that's one option, all right? If we can go out and we get the Holy Grail, we don't have to worry about any of this death stuff. Or, or, or maybe we find the fountain of youth. Or, 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 or maybe... Like you're always you're always into those horror movies. Yeah. Maybe maybe we study vampirism, because <laughs> well, yeah. vampires don't die, right? <laughs> That's exactly what I'm talking about. All right, all right, all right. So so we should think about the consequences of that, though, because like if we have, you know, if we become vampires, does that mean that we can't eat regular food? You know, I know how much you're into culinary stuff. Okay. Okay. Um, are we are we saying like never any daylight? Is that like complete? Or are we like kind of like Blade, where we're kind of like a day walker, where we're like wizard? Well, well, Blade was born. <laughs> um, I um, so I hope you know that I have an advance directive. I have a DNR. I have everything already planned out. Everything. Yep, including um, you know. I am living as I am, but I am also dying as I am, so... Um, I think there's probably a few things that you've left out. Um, uh, well, in about five minutes, is, I, I've, I've only not planned the next five minutes. <laughs> okay, well, a lot can happen. I have these yeah. cards. Great, um, great. So let's just, let's test you. Okay. Cool. Um, so I wish uh, that I knew who to call. So if something were to happen, who would... You call first. I'm going to call you. Okay, perfect. Yeah. All right. Um, you do have a lot of this stuff. Yeah, there's out. only four minutes left. Um, so, like, in four minutes, um, we're going to If I was back. attacked by um, thousands cool. of spiders, cool. what would I want to happen? Um, well, um, you would know because... See, you didn't think of everything. Um, in about three minutes, I'm going to release the spiders because I've planned the next 35 years of my life as part of my advanced directive. Um, it's all one big funeral ceremony <laughs> for three decades. If the time traveler version yeah. of me were to find me and try and replace me, I would... Um, well, they, they are also arriving too because there's actually just two minutes left before my advanced directive goes into place. <laughs> If I suddenly couldn't remember what my advanced directive was, I would... Well, that's a good question, because um, in about 30 seconds, it's going to begin, and then we are going to participate until I die in one elaborate, lifelong funeral experience. So, so the funeral... So first you said you are going to live for the next 35 years. Well, that's what I wrote on the paper, because they don't let you expand your directive to, to cover over 35 years. So you're very much like in the death is healing. Sort yeah, oh, of like actually, we've just started. So what I really want for you is to um, always tell me how good I look and um, bring flowers everywhere. And for the next 35 years, just in case. Yeah, just, well, that's part of the process. That's what I want. <laughs> you don't know what I want. I know what I want. And um, speaking of those giant spiders, they're about to arrive. So, <laughs> Yeah, they are. Yeah. So, but that's what I wanted. Yeah. So that's what we're doing. And you thought of it. Yeah. So we're doing whatever I want until I die. <laughs> Hi. Hey, how's it going? Good, good, good. How's it going? All right. Um, so I was going to pull the chair up for you, but I don't, I don't want to be no, no, no. I presuming can, I, I, much I can grab, I can, I can grab one. Oh, it's, you grab your own chair, then like, oh, why am I here, right? <laughs> well, um, um, I, I, I was wondering if you could, uh, yeah. if you could help me with something. Uh, I'm a very helpful person. <laughs> well, I would love to help you with something. I, 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 I really appreciate that. Yeah. Um, I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm a little nervous. Uh, um, don't be. <laughs> I mean, this is. This is where you want to be. That's really what it's about, right? Everybody's got dreams. Look out there. It's true. Tell me what your dreams are. I, I, I want to be, I want to be buried someplace pretty. Oh, that gum, man. Tell me about it. Yeah. yeah um, so you want to be buried. I want to, I want to be buried, but not in. I don't want to be embalmed, though. Like no? I think that, I think that seems kind of weird, but. 
I, I wouldn't say it's weird, but those that make that choice, that is their, their choice. Uh, but I think it is good. Uh, uh, it's, yes, you don't want that, so okay. Yeah, I just kind of want to be buried someplace pretty, kind of shallow in the ground so that, like, uh, some, some, like a bear might dig me up and have me for dinner. That's creative. Yeah, I figure, you know, circle of life and everything, like, like I live on through the bear. You know, I feel like you come to me to help you kind of sort things out in these last days, but I, I feel like I'm, I'm learning something about myself. You know, I guess yeah. I never really, it's like a hairdresser, right? Real good doing somebody else's hair and their stuff is never done. I just feel <laughs> like I haven't really thought about what, what I do, where I want to be. Well, where do you want to be? Well, that's my point. I'm, just, I'm thinking about it now with you sitting here. Well, think about it. I, well, I, um, you know, uh, I always like uh, bicycles. I like bicycles a lot. I've been on this uh, bike tour. And uh, somewhere in Santa Monica, I met a nice fella who liked to fish. And I was standing on the pier next to him, and uh, he caught this fish. And I swear to God, he <laughs> I'm looking at this fish in its eyes, right? Yeah. And it was like it was calling to me, you know? I'm, okay. <laughs> and I kind of feel like, you know, because I'm also a Pisces. <laughs> <laughs> that like maybe that's the connection I'm looking for. Like maybe when I go, you just kind of put me in the water. Kind of like maybe something in the movies. Oh, maybe we just put you on a big hook and toss you out there. We'll be real in. <laughs> I'm open to it. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't about me. This is about you, and I'm just... It's about us. Like we've been, you know, we've been friends for a while, but I don't think we've ever talked this deeply before. I mean, I was surprised when you made that call. <laughs> you know, I've been, I just had a wild idea is going through my head and I was like, nope, don't say that. But what I really wanna do, I just wanna be vulnerable with you is what I'm trying to get to. And I think our friendship, our, our friendship is something special and uh, Really, when I think long and hard about it, I, I don't want to go alone. I said it. <laughs> I said it. Uh, I just don't want to go. I don't. I don't want to go alone. Well, I have to say that if you're saying you want to go with me, I, I'm honored. Uh, yeah. I, I'm excited. I'm a yeah. little nervous. Hot dog. I, I mean, I don't know if I want to get put on the end of a hook now. Or well, I mean, there. But you'll meet me at the pier. Yeah. When you're good and ready. I, I'll meet you on that pier. I feel like maybe we should get this in writing first. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I just, just so the, uh, my family knows, I mean, we talk about it, but. Right, right. Um, I don't even know where to start with this. Really. I know, it's like, I feel like we haven't really like named it. <laughs> you know, but. We're gonna meet on a pier, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, whoo, here we go. Death Cafe open for business. Woohoo! Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, cool, cool. Don't know where to start. <laughs> uh, we've got a lot of options, and you know what? The biggest one is we're going to talk about death for as long as it takes to eat a meal. That's um, what you do here. No, no, that's <laughs> cool. Uh, uh, we actually like don't serve any food at all. We actually just talk for meals take about 90 minutes. So we're just going to talk for 90 minutes. <laughs> That's a long time to talk about what? Is it too much time? What do you want? <laughs> more time. <laughs> oh, more time. OK, great. Would you please have a seat if you want? Would you like a seat? Uh, yeah, I'll take a seat. I appreciate that. Excellent. We should have more customers coming, and you can start talking to other strangers about death, too. <laughs> That's a really interesting concept. I feel like you can cover a lot of ground doing that. Oh, absolutely. So the first thing about death is, oh, ah, right? That was my first thought. That was my first thought, too. Yeah. I'm Joanne. Hey, Joanne. Uh, t uh, Tiffany. Nice to meet you, Tiffany. Yeah. Um, I never I never was good at cooking, and but I love a cafe experience. So. No, I appreciate it. It's it's a uh, minimalist. Yeah. Yeah. I um, I went for light gray walls. I saw that. I thought stark white was too head to the light. So, <laughs> but that's an, okay, oh, yeah. Hey. Oh, hi, welcome to the Death Cafe. Yeah, just looking at your menu. I'd like to get uh, an oak casket burial oh. and I'd like it upholstered with velvet because you know, oh. you only go once. Uh, yeah. Like, uh, whew, 
What's popular here? What are a lot of people doing? Well, that's a good question. That is a great question. Oh, we get a lot of requests for uh, that. Um, what is that? Just that. Oh, just, just like, like uh, one of those. No, like, what, what do you mean? What is that? So, like, do you have like, something like where like maybe like it's a nice warm room and I'm uh, maybe having a a romantic experience? Yes, we do have and that. And then like I just feel like that'd kind of be a nice way to. Yes. Yes. Um, that is. That is a, that's very popular and far less common than people want to imagine. Um, uh, maybe that's a little but selfish. we can put in an order for that. We can put in an order. Um, another popular thing is an organic rain tree all natural death. Um, you know, just where you get some like chickens roaming around yeah. and there's oats on the walls. You know, very natural based. Yeah. 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 What about like kind of the an action movie experience. Oh. Like, I'm on a bus and it's on fire and I gotta stop it and I gotta save people. And then I turn around and look and say, I got this one. And then I save everybody. And oh, then it's like, and then you're the hero. Oh. Yeah. We do serve heroes for sure, for sure. Okay. That is a wonderful option. If that's of interest to both of you. Both of us. Or either yeah, of you, you, can, you both get to choose. It's a very choose your own experience adventure. I. I guess I don't need a big adventure, and I'm okay. relatively comfortable with it, really. I, that's just from my own experience. I, I, I used to serve in the military. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow, welcome. Some close calls, and now I'm just kind of like, okay, I get it. Great. Yeah. So maybe if you look over I just, here. Um, something quieter yeah, than that. Yeah, we can that. talk about quiet. Um, music is something that comes up. Yeah. So you want to start making that playlist. We have a few already made. Um, oh, this oh my God! I love Jeff Buckley. Yeah, that's all Jeff Buckley. Yeah, uh, yeah. And I, I, I don't love. Oh, you. That's. So you I'm gonna know need what? something else. Okay. Well, how well. about we have all these Enya songs? Those are calming and hard to understand. Because the funeral's sad. Why not cry more? Oh, would you not want crying? I could. I, 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 I all party all the time. I like. Oh, like, all party all the time. So, I yeah. love it. I love. That way, it. everyone is served. Like people who ready for me to go and people. Who are ready for you guys, you know, I feel like more celebrating. <laughs> Great like idea. Maybe music is not what I, what about an audiobook? Can I have an audiobook play? Yes. Because then people can learn something while they're there. It's like Is it maybe an audiobook where like you are the you're you're the reader. Yes, you're, yes, you're the, yes. you're the narrator. You're the yeah. your own You two are so good at this. And then and maybe we're making a connection we didn't imagine was there. <laughs> <laughs> in the theater, public policy, yeah, you should take a bow, you take a bow, I take a bow, take a bow, the four of you, yay. So, I want to thank you all so much for coming out this afternoon. Uh, this has absolutely been an honor and a pleasure for us. Uh, thank you so much for spending this time with us. I also want to do a big thank you to the folks who made this possible, uh, both the Mayo Clinic Hospice and Palliative Care Center, as well as a, a special grant from uh, Lucy Gonda. Please, a big round of applause for all of them for helping make this possible. Uh, I will note you have a you had a pre-show survey and you also have a post-show survey in your goodie bags. We really hope that you will fill those out. Um, I always tell people uh, if you enjoyed the show, definitely fill it out because people who hated the show are already filling them out. So uh, <laughs> make sure that you do that. Um, until then, uh, we have been Alexis Camille, Brandon Boat, Duck Washington. My name is Tane Danger. Vanessa Chu is over there on the Woo. piano. And one more time, can we do a big round of applause for our two fabulous expert guests? I lost one of them. Oh, there she is. Dr. Ann McIntosh, Brenda Hartman. They will both be in the lobby after the show if you want to ask them some more questions. But thank you all so much. Have a great rest of your day, and we will see you soon. Good night. Goodbye. Good afternoon.